Hi, third graders. After a review yesterday of equivalent fractions, we're going to continue with that learning today. We're still working with equivalent fractions, but what we're going to be doing is putting fractions in, finding the equivalent fraction that would be in simplest form. So today's target is I can write fractions in simplest form, and you'll have evidence of this learning when you can write accurately fractions in simplest form. There'll be a, a Google form that you fill out at the end with some fractions that need to be reduced or um, simplified. So we learned and we reviewed yesterday that you can find equivalent fractions by either multiplying or dividing both the numerator and denominator by the same number. And so really, a fraction can have an infinite number of equivalent fractions because you can multiply by an infinite number of possibilities. But what we're going to look for today is we're going to divide, we're going to take a, a, starting with a fraction, we're going to divide down and divide down and divide down, making our fraction smaller and smaller and smaller. In other words, simpler and simpler and simpler until we get to the lowest possible fraction we get where we can't divide anymore. So we want to still divide the numerator and denominator by the same number, and we keep going until we've reached the lowest or simplest form. So if we look at two-fourths here, if we divide both the numerator and denominator by two, I get the fraction one-half. And since I can't divide one-half, I can't divide the one and the two by anything else, we would say one-half is definitely in simplest form. I can't divide any further. So if we start with a fraction with, for example, 4 twelfths, there's a couple of different ways you could approach it. When you look at 4 and 12, you would notice that they're both even numbers, so you know automatically they're both divisible by 2, that, because even numbers are. So if you divide both the numerator and denominator by 2, 4 divided by 2 is 2, 12 divided by 2 is 6. We've got an equivalent fraction of 2 6. And then I'd ask myself, is that the lowest these could go? And when I look at both of these numbers, 2 and 6, they're both still even numbers. So I know I can go another round. I can divide both of them by 2 again. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. And 6 divided by 2 is three. When I, so I, when I get to one third, I ask myself, can I divide both the numerator and denominator by the same number again? And in this case, the answer is no. So when my answer is no, I now know I've got this fraction in lowest terms. So we would say the simplest form of four twelfths is one third. So that's one way you can approach finding a fraction in simplest form, you can divide by two, divide by two, or you can divide multiple times because these are all equivalent fractions and you're just finding the equivalent fraction that's in lowest terms or in simplest form. Another way though would take less steps and that would be to start with four twelfths and ask yourself, what can I divide four and 12 by? I usually start with the denominator or the numerator, and notice, well, 4 obviously can be divided by 4. Can 12 be divided by 4? And in this case, it can. So just taking the one step of dividing by 4, both the numerator and denominator, 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 12 divided by 4 is 3. I also get the, fra the equivalent fraction of 1 third and in the simplest form with less steps. Either way works perfectly fine. So when I get a fraction like 3 twelfths, what, when, you know, when I look at 3 and 12, I kind of start with that numerator, 3. 3 can be divided by 3. Can 12 be divided by 3? And in this case, yes, it can. 12 can be divided by 3. So I'm going to divide both the numerator and denominator by 3. 3 divided by 3 equals 1. 12 divided by 3 equals 4. So now I ask myself, 1 fourth, is that in simplest form? Can I divide any more, both the numerator and the denominator? 
And the answer is no. So I know I've got the simplest form. So the, an equivalent fraction of 3 twelfths in simplest form would be 1 fourth. How about this one? 10 thirtieths. If you want to pause and give it a try yourself and compare. A couple different ways I can approach this. I can look at the numerator and know, well, I can divide 10 by 10. Can I divide 30 by 10? And yes, I can. So I could take one step and divide both the numerator and denominator by 10. So 10 divided by 10 would be 1. 30 divided by 10 is 3. That gave me the equivalent fraction of 1 third. And when I look at 1 and 3, I know I've got a fraction in simplest form. I could also take multiple steps, just, you know, maybe dividing by 2. When I see both those zeros, I know that both those numbers are even numbers, so I might start by dividing by 2, both the numerator and denominator. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 30 divided by 2 is 15. And then I look at these two numbers. What can I divide both the 5 and 15 by? And it would be 5. So 5 divided by 5 is 1, 15 divided by 5 is 3. So another approach to finding a fraction in simplest form, I can divide multiple times as long as I divide both in, with each step, I divide the numerator and denominator by the same number. That's the only thing I need to be careful. Okay, 15 thirtieths. What would be the fraction in simplest form? Pause and figure it out and then we'll compare. We might have noticed right away, or you might know in your head right away, that 15 is half of 30. Or in other words, 15 divided by 15 is 1, and 30 divided by 15 is 2. There's two 15s in 30. So the simplest form of 15 thirtieths is 1 half. I can't divide the 1 and the 2 by anything else. I might have, though, noticed, I, I could take another approach, I might have noticed that both of them also, or both of them end in a zero or a five, so I know that they're both multiples of five, which means I could divide them both by five. So 15 divided by five is three, 30 divided by five is six, so I've got three six, and I ask myself, can I divide both the three and the six by the same number? And yes, I could. I could divide them both by three. So I could take a second step of dividing by 3 here. 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 6 divided by 3 is 2. Also arriving at 1 half as simplest form. How about 14 28ths? Pause and figure it out. 14 28ths. Well, again, a couple different approaches. Right away, I notice that they're both even numbers, so I might just start by dividing by 2. Make it easy. Work with friendly numbers. 14 divided by 2 is 7. 28 divided by 2 would be 14. 7 and 14. Can I divide both of them by the same number? Well, 7. I can divide 7 by 7 and 14. I can also. So 7 divided by 7 equals 1, 14 divided by 7 equals 2. So again, whenever I get to 1 half, I know that that's simplest form. Some of you might have compared those numbers right away if you were thinking to yourself, well, 14, what can I divide 14 by? I can divide it by 1 and 14, 2 and 7. 14, can I divide, what can I divide 28 by? Well, 1 and 28 2 and 14. Oh, since I can divide that by 14, I can jump right to that. Divide them both by 14. 14 divided by 14 is 1. 28 divided by 14 is 2. So also arriving at 1 half. So the simplest form of 14 28s would be 1 half. Last practice. Give this a try. Pause. All right, 1840 seconds. Again, my advice is to start with friendly numbers. I see they're both even, so I'm going to start by dividing them both by 2. 18 divided by 2 equals 9. 42 divided by 2 
oops, that was divided by 2. 42 divided by 2. Uh, 21. Okay, 9 and 21. What can I divide both of them by? Well, I know they're both multiples of 3, so I'm going to divide both by 3. 9 divided by 3 equals 3. 21 divided by 3 equals 7. 3 sevenths. Can I divide both the 3 and the 7 by the same number to get any lower? And the answer would be no. So in this case, 3 sevenths is my fraction in simplest form. So 18 40 seconds in simplest form is 3 sevenths. So there we have it. Writing fractions in simplest form. We divide, we find equivalent fractions by dividing. So the numbers get lower and lower and smaller and smaller until I can't divide anymore, both the numerator and denominator. So third graders, what you're going to do now is choose at least one of these practice um, activities. This will be on the next slide. So when you're done with this video, you'll go to the next slide and you'll choose one of at least one of these activities. Of course, you can do more. One of them is a worksheet. If you have the ability to pull up this lesson on a home computer, since we can't print from our Chromebooks, um, you may need parent or a caregiver assistance to help you with that. If you are able to do that and you like to practice this way, there is this these worksheets, pages 99 and 100, attached that you could print and uh, work on. And then you don't have that ability to print or you just don't want to, there are two other options. You can, of course, go to IXL, and there's a recommendation for you called Write Fractions in Lowest Terms. Also, you can watch this Brain Pop video. So watching another video, but it's Tim and Moby, and they always have good visuals for explaining how to do something. And then take the quiz afterwards. If you need the username and password to get into Brain Pop, they are here for you. So, well done, third graders. You now know how to find equivalent fractions in simplest form. If you do that, the very last slide gives the answers. So when you're done with a worksheet, you can self-check with these answers.